Ahmad Lewis, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, you're the artist responsible for giving us the hit record back in the day and so, so much more. It's not just that. Um, anybody who grew up in LA, there's absolutely no way that they don't know that song, right? That's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> for better Literally, or Literally, every time I bring it up, it's like, oh yeah, back in the day, I know yeah. that. Like, how could you not? Um, I want to kind of hit you with something tough first. You had so much success just off of that one single. Um, I feel like if anybody were to ask, they'd be like, oh yeah, he was gonna blow up mainstream. Absolutely. What kept you from not continuing on the mainstream level? Well, you know, it's a good question. I was 17 when I signed my record deal. Mm. And then when Back in the Day came out, I was 18 when it was blowing up. And then my record company went out of business. I was on a label called Giant, which was a subsidiary of Warner Brothers and um, they went out of business but they kept the rights to my music so I'm struggling to get off this label and it wasn't like it is today where you could go on Instagram, Facebook, exactly. or SoundCloud and put out your own music you were pretty much at the mercy of the label and just that combined with a lot of stress and seeing too much you know as a young person traveling the world being exposed to so much um, I think it just snowballed into me just taking a break. And just being like, you didn't want any more. Yeah, and I couldn't put out music, and then I got to the point where I didn't even want to put out music. But then a little while after that, I did start a band called Fourth Avenue Jones, okay. and we got signed to Interscope Records. And I was working with a band for years, maybe six or seven years. But as a solo artist, that's kind of what happened. Right. Yeah. Um, did you ever feel any way about taking that break or is that like the decision that you knew you had to make? Well, it was tough because I put, like, hip hop is my whole life. Right. Um, or it was my whole life at that point. And I was, um, you know, an underground MC. So I was never trying to make records that would appeal to like a mass audience. Okay. For me, it was always about being authentic. People saying, man, he's dope. You know, he's one of the best from L.A., he holds it down. So, my peers, I always get respect, always got respect, and um, that was most important. So when people say, oh, you only had one hit, that's kind of like a bonus. Yeah. Because really, we weren't in it for any hits. It was just, we loved making music. Um, music is what I've always done since growing up in church. Exactly. Um, so I couldn't do anything but make music, and then to get paid for it, and then to make a song that, you know, 25 years later, I'm being interviewed about. I just look at it as a blessing. I, and it's just a blessing to even have one hit single because there's so many musicians who, you uh, know, no might hit, not even. You know, right, they don't look, even no get that far. <laughs> <laughs> no hit one. You know, so to have one hit at 17, that's what people ask. It's blessed me my whole life, even on college entrance things. Like I could put out, wrote a song, mm -hmm. and platinum, and I traveled the wow. world. How much of a better application? is that way so better. in so many ways it's benefited okay yeah what was it like to have success at such a young age overwhelming okay. um <clears throat> because there's jim carrey said something interesting he said i wish everybody would blow up and get all the success and the money that they could possibly handle and all that they want so that they can see it won't make you happy and i mm. feel like that's kind of what happened with me is I was always a little unhappy coming up. And I thought it was because I was poor from South Central. Um, but then you get money, and then you got women, and then you got fame, and you still don't feel good. You still don't feel kind of satisfied. And to me, that was a, a, um, a lonely place mm. to be. I felt very lonely at my height. Um, and, and I was not satisfied at all with the life that I was living. Yeah. Um, and then music became a struggle, and you don't know who's really there because they're down with you, or who's just trying to hang on. So it was it was a challenge, and then people knowing you, and you don't know if you really know them. Oh God, you know. And I'm like, and you're like, wait, because like, you know how that happens now <laughs> yeah. in regular life, and you're like middle school, yeah, you know, like what? But just imagine, you know, people, and then of course they get mad at you if you don't respond the way they want. And I'm just a kid. Yeah. So it was just a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. So what do you think the secret is to, you know, still maintaining who you are and having like 
everything and still maintaining your wellness and stuff with that level of success? Well, that's a great question. I think it's about understanding who you are in the first place. Okay. I think I had such an early start, I never had the opportunity to get grounded, to make best friends, right. to like be struggling in college with other people. I was like working at 17, making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, nobody could tell me anything. And then I didn't have a father. I'm a single mom. So she was kind of back in LA and I'm just doing my thing. Um, and that was a challenge. I, I think you have to know yourself before you can do anything of note and really be um, have a foundation in it. And sense. I don't feel like I knew myself at all. That makes sense. I feel like I hear a lot of, like when I listen to other people, um, young artists, musicians, they say the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so it seems like it definitely happens for a lot of people. Um, what was your immediate reaction when you found out that Back in the Day was going to be on the soundtrack of The Wood? You know what, I was excited because um, I went to the premiere for The Wood and okay. I met the actors and I was just real pumped, you know, to meet everybody. I had never been like to a, movie, a film premiere. Yeah. Um, so that was a good, a good experience. I always like seeing my music in, in films because yeah. it's weird you're, you know, on the big screen. And, <laughs> It's, it's just a kind different of a trip. thing, yeah. yeah. Like, and I know that's always going to be there. My son, he's 13. You know, now he doesn't think I'm cool at all. But one day, he might. <laughs> you just got to play the track, yeah. play the video, play the movie, and then be like, "He's like, look. Oh, you old man? You don't know nothing." <laughs> so he has not a fan. But one day, hopefully, he'll look and be like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." Yeah. You know, my dad did that. Do you yeah. remember like the moment that you did find out that it was going to be on the movie? Um. Or was it so much happening that you yeah, kind of so weren't phased by it? So I, yeah. Honestly, I wasn't phased okay. by it. Yeah, I've been on maybe four or five soundtracks. Right. And that was one of them. And, but I do love that film. Okay. And I know people, it's it's up there with their favorite in terms of coming of age right. movies, especially West Coast from Inglewood. Okay. I just love everything about the film. What so, were the other uh, movies? Well, I was I had a song and Jason's lyric. That's that, this whole oh, uh, yeah. I had okay. a song called "That's How It Is," which was really dope. I love that song. And then I had a song called "Meteor Man" on the Meteor Man soundtrack. Got it. <laughs> That's like an old like, <laughs> a superhero movie. Robert, okay. Robert Townsend did, and um, I know a movie Tag. I think it just came out. Um, and back in the days in that movie. That is so cool. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. And I still get You're checked. still going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the that best That is amazing. Yeah. Um, and what's even more amazing and fascinating to me is that you kind of went in a completely different direction. When Absolutely. you took a break, you went to Long Beach City College, then that's you right. went on to Stanford, and then USC. Yeah. Um, tell me about that journey. <clears throat> it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Much really? more difficult than music. Because okay. music is like breathing. Okay. Um, but that was using a different part of my brain. And I was excited about it. I grew up and I was bused to school. So I told you I'm from South Central, like the worst part of South Central, where the riots started. Mm. Florence and Normandy, right? So I live in, like people from the hood are scared of my hood. Yeah. <laughs> So I like him from the hood. Yeah. And so coming from that, I would get bused to school. I went to Paul Revere Junior High School okay. at that time. It's middle school now. And then I went to Palisades High School. Mm. So I would see the neighborhood change in, every morning, like from terrible to like the best you can get. That's and crazy. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. And I think that's what kind of sparked my activism too. Okay. But that's another, yeah. for another day. Talk about all of it. Yeah, yeah. But I, um... <laughs> You know, I was like in honors classes at those schools, but never really applying myself. I was playing football, I was rapping, writing raps in class, mm -hmm. and just never gave it my all. Mm -hmm. I would get C's and D's and even F's, <clears throat> terrible kind of student. But I went to City College after my band broke up, um, and I went back to school and I said, I'm going to do the best I can on every paper. I just want to see how well I can do. And one class was an A, the next class was an A. I started collecting A's. I didn't want to break up my collection. Yeah. <laughs> so I kept getting A's. I got in the honors program. Um, and then I ended up valedictorian at Long Beach City That's College. That's amazing. 
and then I applied to Stanford, Berkeley, and UCLA, and I got into all three, and then I got a full scholarship offer from UCLA wow. and from Stanford. Because <clears throat> Stanford, the thing that people don't know, and I always tell people this, they think it's so expensive, but if you get in, if you can't afford it, the tuition is free. Exactly. Because it's you know less than one percent when I got in in terms of transfers, mm -hmm. they had like 2,000 applicants and 20 people got it. Oh wow. So that lets you know, even that is like a miracle for me, like winning the lottery. So I went to Stanford and then um, I got my master's from U.S. Okay. Yeah. So when you have accomplishments like that where you're Valley Victorian, is that like kind of in the same path of like how you feel and your accomplishments in your music career too? See, I, I want to say I felt better. About okay. It, honestly, I kind of felt like you were going to say that. I yeah, just kind of set you up for it. Yeah, I know. But then I don't want to be like <laughs> disrespectful to the music. Yeah. Because I do love all the things I've done. But like going to school, nobody can give you anything. Like mm -hmm. it's a full meritocracy. Like at its best. Obviously, they have people like professors who prefer people and that kind of thing. But like for the most part, you have to do your own work. You have to write your papers. And so for me to get in that environment from South Central, a hip hop artist, had been out of school for years and then went back, to me I was just really um, grateful. Yeah. And I felt um, accomplished when I finished. I felt like I represented myself and my community well. I love so I it. take a lot of, uh, now I don't want to say pride, but just gratitude. Yeah, yeah. for sure. What did you study? When I studied were... sociology at Stanford, okay. and then I got my master's in social work. Okay. <clears throat> so I do clinical work, and then I'm a counselor um, working with young people. Got it. Yeah. So what led you on this journey, you know, from somebody who had success, hit records, 17 years old? There's a lot of people who are in that position, and then they go the opposite way, like, That's okay, true. now I don't have to go to school, like, I yeah. made it. So what made you like be like, okay, this well, is Well, because I, I wasn't rich, I needed money. Got I had it. to figure out how I'm gonna, if music never, if I never make another dime in music, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And I think that's a question a lot of people hear rappers, well, if I wasn't rapping, I, I'd be robbing people. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of <laughs> sounds cool, but for me, I was never that guy. Okay. So I was like, if I'm not rapping, I would go to Stanford, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did and so you know I love it now I feel like you know I'm in a position to have options and so I'm working on music right now um, <clears throat> and really excited about the new music but I can make it understanding that it's not my whole world if it doesn't blow up I'm gonna eat you know I can buy shoes if I want to like I don't need music to live and I think that makes it a better relationship between myself and the music. Mm, you think it relieves the pressure? Relieves yeah. the pressure. I used to be like, this has, I yeah. gotta make it, like in the studio, and then riding everybody. <clears throat> really just a hard person to be around because I was a perfectionist mm -hmm. and so caught up in ego, and not ego in terms of arrogance. Eckhart Tolle is a spiritual teacher, um, has appeared on Oprah a lot. Okay. He talks about ego in terms of a mind-created false self like a, a self that you present to the world that you'll protect by any means necessary. And I felt like that was me. I really wanted, I had this ego, and I was like, man, I, I gotta be dope. I gotta appear this mm -hmm, way. It's got, mm -hmm. And that can really, um, that can really um, lead to depression sure. um, and a lot of mental health issues, which I did have to deal with too, coming out of being at the top then people saying, oh, you fell off, you won here, one. Like, I can say it now, but when you're 17, 18, and people are like, oh, you whack, you fell off, whatever, and you know you can't do anything about it, yeah. it really makes you ask yourself, well, who am I <clears throat> if I never have that again? Exactly. So it's an existential question about why am I here and who am I? Exactly. And those two questions opened up the floodgates to me in terms of self-discovery, um, and understanding that I'm not who, what I do, I'm not what I have, but I am, I have intrinsic value because I am part of the same source of life that created everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. So if I never make another song, the fact that I'm here, I'm as valuable as a flower, right? 
So how valuable are flowers? Can we live without them? I don't think so. So every little thing adds to this beauty of life. Definitely. And I do too. With, with or without back in the day. Or yeah. Kids or, yeah. Or Stanford. And now you get to do both like with ease. With ease. And then now I have this wisdom too. Yeah. Had I never gone through that journey, I might still be striving to prove to people I'm this or that and never have peace. Mm -hmm. You can have a whole lot and feel broke. And you can be broke and feel like you have a whole lot. So, yeah. And you feel like that's what comes back to like knowing who you are and knowing your value, knowing the value of other people, mm -hmm. um, and just yeah, just being present, mm -hmm. appreciating that's so the moment. Big. Yeah. yeah, that's huge. I I've gone through years of my life and can't really even tell you what happened. Yeah, because I was so locked in on a goal. And like, I gotta reach this goal, and I gotta get this goal, and then you get the goal, and you're happy for a couple seconds, then it's the next goal. Exactly. It's just a carrot in front of you, chasing this carrot, and they convince us that the more you have means you're worth more. Mm. And when you believe that, it can lead you astray, right? Because who you have, what you have is not who you are, because you can lose what you have. What would you say makes you the happiest, being a musician? or being in the council business? Hmm. I don't know. Because sometimes you're with a kid and you see them get it and they turn it around and that's the best payoff yeah. ever. Um, but then sometimes you're writing a song and it's clicking right. Um, I can't judge them. It's like kids, you, you know, I can't pick it, huh? one. I would feel guilty. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really, that, and you know, that's important, right? Because you would think, okay, you go to Stanford. Why don't you go to Wall Street or go work for Google or be a consultant mm -hmm. and make more money than you can as a clinician or a counselor? But that's another thing I'm talking about. Like, how much joy do I derive from meeting with young people and helping them kind of make better choices? Right. and understand the connection between their thoughts, feelings, and behavior, and have a kid who was depressed, you know, two months later be the happiest person. Um, I don't think you can put a price on yeah. that. And I'm happy every day I go to work. I love that. And so I'm rich. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a mentality, too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that goes back to, like, being in the present moment, too. Like, if you're just here and you're just following what your purposes and everything, everything just kind of flows. flows. Well, that's what it is. You're in the flow. Yeah. Right? And this thing about standing in a river and then you're trying to, like, walk against the flow, mm -hmm. it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing for a large portion of my life. And then when I turned around in the river and just started to go with the flow and just say, man, okay, this is a lot easier. Yeah. Like, in terms of a way of life, it's easier to be in flow than to kind of mm -hmm. go against it. And I've just picked that up, and I honestly feel like my life has changed. Just because you just follow it, and so many more doors like open up. Open. With so when much a ease. door doesn't open, you don't worry. Yeah. Because you're like, I'm in flow. It and wasn't you know it's going to be taken open. care of. Yeah. Like. You know what's so funny? I just got a house, right? Well, I'm renting a house, okay. but it's a beautiful house on a hill, right? From South Central, yes. now you're in a house <laughs> on a hill, right? But no, so I, I got this house, and my partner, she she was a little nervous. She was like, um, you know, we're going to get the house. You know, I said, relax yeah. because, you know what, the perfect place is waiting for us. Exactly. And that's kind of how I live my life. Yeah. And then, of course, it opened up. They call, you got it. But I already knew before they called that if they didn't call, I was fine. And if they did call, I was fine. Yeah. And I think that's how you want to live, just trust in the process. Yeah. Yeah. It makes everything so much better. Yeah. Um, I feel like just even talking to you in this short amount of time, I already know how you're going to answer this. But do you have anything that you would do over in your life? No. No. Just because, um, I mean, I do, I'm not like the person, I don't have any regrets. Like, if I could, but see, I don't want to say I would do it over because okay. maybe I'd be a different mind right, right now. And this, honestly, is the best Amma that's ever been alive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like, you know, um, in terms of my development, mm -hmm. my spirituality, I'm not religious, mm -hmm. but I'm like very much spiritual. And I used to be very religious and not spiritual at all in retrospect. Mm -hmm. I was judging people and just very much, you know, 
the antithesis of what I'm about right. now, which is acceptance and love. So I don't think I would change anything, um, but I do recognize mistakes that I've made. Okay. Yeah. Is there, what advice would you give to somebody who was in your position when you were 17 years old? To take it slow. Okay. Like it's not a hurry, there's no rush, no need to hurry. Um, develop other parts of yourself so that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Always be learning, um, always be getting better. You know, um, yeah, that's what I would. Because I, I think I, there's a difference now between the hip hop today and when I was coming up. And I'm not like For one sure. of those old people yeah. like, back in my day. <laughs> but I feel like it was a lot more about skill in mm -hmm. terms of being an MC. And you had to really be skilled. And so that would be a piece of advice too to really just perfect your yeah. craft and get good at what you say you do. For sure. Yeah. Um, do you have anything like planned in this upcoming up next in this journey of yours? Yeah, I <clears> have <throat> new clothes coming out. Okay. Um, like based around back in the day in my songs, I have a 25th anniversary line of merch that have like the lyrics to back in the day. And different oh, that's a, oh, I gotta get one. See, that's I gotta what I'm get saying. one. That's what I wanna hear. I gotta get one. Cha ching. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. But then I'm putting, um, and so we're developing the e-commerce site for that right now. Okay. And then I'm doing, um, I'm writing a book, right, called South Central to Stanford, mm. that is kind of about my journey and all this stuff yeah. I've learned. Um, but that's on hold while I finish this new album that is a lot of singing, honestly. It's like the hook to back in the day. Okay. But I'm not <clears throat> rapping in a high pitch. <laughs> I'm kind of singing in melody and which is real popular right now anyway, mm -hmm. kind of melodic hip hop. But when I was coming up, it was like, oh, that's R&B, you, yeah. you need to like, you know, but now everybody's like. I feel like that's the same thing that what Drake is going through, that Absolutely. people say, yeah. <laughs> but you know what, I love Drake. I'm a big Drake fan, you know, whether he writes it all or not. <laughs> right. Because honestly, pop artists get writers all the time. And I think hip hop is maybe coming of age mm -hmm. where we can see some of our stars reaching out and getting help. And I look at it differently too. I know this is off the subject. Yeah, no, it's fine. <clears throat> but I feel like you're giving people opportunities when you have writers, mm. when you have people behind the scenes. So if he does have a network of writers and they're getting publishing, exactly. they're feeding families, and he can be the front man. Um, because other genres let you do it. Exactly. Whitney didn't write any of her songs. I get that. I never understood why people like got on him so bad. Because hip hop write. is so much about being authentic. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you didn't write those words you're saying, okay, it's just like oh my god. Right? <laughs> so I do see that. So part. you do feel it a little bit. But I'm like I'm thinking he's in there coaching. Even if he didn't write it, exactly. he it's a part. It really represents mm -hmm. him still. That's what my hope mm -hmm. is. And if anything, he still delivers it well. He delivers he's still, it you well. Know. Yeah. Because I've heard people who say they write for him, and then I listen to their stuff, and I'm like, well, you don't sound like <laughs> And I'm not dissing them. But, you know, I'm listening yeah. to Drake. I'm not listening to them. So there's he's doing something. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, Ma, this has been amazing. Thank no, you so I much. I too much. No, <laughs> not at all. This is the best thing ever. Um, I loved hearing about your whole journey, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Of course. And buy a t-shirt. Of course. Oh, I definitely am. <laughs> no, I'll give, sure. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I'm just playing. Thank you. Right, thank you. <laughs>